Are you thinking about getting the Legends Legacy Precon deck? Are you looking to add a little more power to the deck but don't want to break the bank doing it? In this episode I'll go over the Legends Legacy Preconstructed deck that I added $10 worth of budget upgrades so that you can crush your games at your commander table. Hopefully it'll help you decide if this deck is worth it for you. If this is something of interest to you then I hope you'll stick around for the deck tech. Hey everyone, I'm Chukimon, and for this version of the deck, I decided to go with Shannon Sleeper's Gorge as the commander. I like how many cards she can draw you, and she just seemed more fun to me. But don't worry, Dihad is still hanging out in the 99. So my goal for the deck was to look into alternate options for winning the game besides combat. The deck is still a bit combat centric, but if we ever run into a pillow fort decks, then we can still play the game. Now, first I want to get the less exciting stuff out of the way. The deck needs a bit more fixing and ramp, so we'll go over that. I included the three basic dual lands from Dominary United, Geothermal Bog, Sunlit Marsh, and Sacred Peaks. They're cheap and easy includes for the deck, and you might already own some in your own collection. They have a very minor synergy in the deck with other lands like Dragon Skull Summit or Foreboding Ruin. I cut one of each basic for these cards. I also included one of each signet to help with the fixing and the ramp. And finally, the last piece of ramp and the most expensive card in the deck, Relic of Legends. This card and Honor Worn Shaku are really good in this deck. They basically turn your legendary creatures into mana dorks with haste. So it can really help you chain legendary spells with your commander on the battlefield. And it has an interesting synergy with Traxos Scourge of Krug by basically turning him into a cost reducer for your legendary spells. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get into the good stuff. First up, we have Commander Liara Porter. This card synergizes well with the combat strategy that's already part of this deck. She's a solid source of card advantage, and with your commander on the battlefield, she can double up on the card advantage with the legends that you play. Garna, Blood Fist of Keld. Garna also works well for this strategy of the deck by giving you card advantage during the combat step, but on top of that, she also works as an aristocrat to give you an alternate win con for the game. Elos Ilkor. Elos is also another great win con for this deck, and she helps negate life loss from your commander whenever you play a legendary creature. General's Enforcer. This card offers a bit more protection for your board. A good chunk of legends are also humans in the deck, so it can be really good with keeping your board intact from board wipes. Lena, Selfless Champion. This deck also has a bit of a token strategy to it, so Lena fits in perfectly by adding more tokens to the board and giving them protection at the same time. Raphael, Fiendish Savior. Raphael works well with giving you some more tokens for the deck, and also those tokens having lifelink can help mitigate some of the life loss from Shannon. Asterion, the Decadent. Asterion works really well in this deck by gaining you a ton of life or finishing off an opponent that you dealt a ton of damage to. Chainer, Nightmare Adept. Chainer's a great piece of recursion for the deck. His ability letting you cast from the graveyard means you're still able to draw cards from Shannon's ability, and he gives haste to the thing that you bring back. Shadowheart, Dark Justiciar. Shadowheart is great for refilling your hand when you need more cards, or sacking a creature when you're in a pinch. Zagreus, Thief of Heartbeats. This was mostly a fun include for me, but I think he works really well with the menace that your commander gives, so your opponents have to give up two creatures when they block. Piru the Volatile. There are surprisingly a lot of legendary creatures that can wipe the board in these colors. Piru can be a one-sided board wipe, although it's a little slow. If you manage to pull it off, you get to keep most of your board intact and gain a crazy amount of life. Orcus, Prince of Undeath. Orcus is versatile in that you can wipe the board with him, or you can use him as a recursion piece. There are a good amount of ways to reduce his mana cost or add a ton of mana with Honor Worn Shaku or Relic of Legends. Massacre Girl. This is one of my favorite board wipes on a body. She can clear out an entire board and because she gives minus one minus one, she can deal with indestructible creatures as well. Just be careful when you cast a Primeval's Glorious Rebirth with her in the graveyard. Judith the Scourge Diva. Buffing up your team can make your tokens you produce a little bit more threatening, and the ping that she does when your other creatures die is nice for keeping the board clear or dealing damage to your opponents. Kervek the Merciless. With the reprint in Double Masters, Kervek is a pretty budget card now, and it's a great way to deal with the board or keep damaging your opponents. General Ferris Rokirik. 
Most of the cards in the deck is multicolored. General Ferris adds more value on top of the cards you draw whenever you cast your multicolored legends. Thalia's Lancers. This card is awesome. It doesn't just stay creatures, so you can grab any legendary spell or land out of the deck. Need a board wipe? Grab a Massacre Girl. Got board wipe? Grab Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Need to finish out the game? How about Hero's Podium? The options are endless. Felden of the Third Path. This is a fun card that can help you recur creatures from the deck. There are a few cards that you can discard or put cards in your graveyard, so Felden can give you more mileage out of those creatures. Hoffrey Ghost Forge. The second most expensive card of the deck. Hoffrey is awesome with protecting your board and getting additional value out of your creatures. Yawgmoth's Vile Offering. This was mostly a fun include for the deck for me. The defect isn't bad. Getting anything out of a graveyard and being able to destroy a creature is an awesome 2 for 1 and with your commander out, it becomes a 3 for 1. Mask of Gristlebrand. This was also another fun include for me. It helps with mitigating the life loss and drawing you some extra cards. And finally, Thran Temporal Gateway. An awesome way to cheat out big creatures from your hand at instant speed and catch your opponents off guard. Now that we've talked about the cards we're going to add, it's time to talk about the cuts that we need to make to add in these awesome new cards. First, we'll start with Alesha who smiles at death. I'm not really sure why they included this in the deck. There aren't very many creatures with power 2 or less in here, so this was a pretty easy cut. Unbreakable Formations. I wanted to keep the legendary count high in the deck, so I added Lena as a legendary version of it, and General's Enforcer just seems like a more solid option than this to me. Moira Urborg Haunt. This card feels like a lot of hoops to jump through for the effect to be good. Knight's Whisper, Read the Bones, Ambition's Cause, Faithless Looting, Thrill of Possibility. The red card draw effects felt very minor to the deck, and the black ones I replaced with cards that were legendary that could draw you more cards. Plus, making the change from Dihada to Shannon felt like I could cut down on these effects. Adriana, Captain of the Guard, Arved the Curse, Drana, Liberator of Malakir, Day of Destiny. These cards are all very combat centric and not much anything else. If there was something that made combat not possible, these don't do anything, so I cut these over some more alternate wing cons. Teshar, Ancestor's Apostle. Cut for the similar reasons of Alesha, there's just not too many 3 mana value targets for Teshar to grab from the graveyard. Ashling, the Pilgrim. The mana investment for Ashling is just too much for her to be effective. Jasu Vess, Lich Knight. This card looks like a lot of fun to me, but it's very inefficient. There are a lot of other token producers that cost less than Jasu and produce more. Tenza, Godo's Maul, Sword of the Chosen, Hero's Blade. The effects of these cards are pretty minimal and narrow for the slots they took up, so fairly easy cuts. Tajik, Blade of the Legion, Kari Zev, Skyship Raider, Captain Lannery Storm. These cards' effects were also pretty minimal. Lannery Storm making treasures is nice, but I think swapping her for Relic of Legends was better. Zatar Alpa Primal Dawn. This card is an awesome and fun card, but not that great in the deck. 8 mana is a lot for what it does, which is nothing. Krenko Tin Street Kingpin. Krenko is a cool card, but it takes a while for the effect to take off, so I cut it from the deck. Anafenza Kintree Spirit. This card doesn't usually make the cut for me. Growing a small creature is not really that impressive. Gerard's Hourglass Pendant. This is a cool and interesting card, but the extra turn thing doesn't come up that often, and the second effect is nice, but it's a little expensive. So after entering all this in into Moxfield.com and updating to the cheapest price, according to TCG Player, at the time of this recording, we've spent $10 and one cent. That's right, we went over one cent. Please forgive me. Now, going into Moxfield and entering in all the cuts that we made from the deck, according to TCG Player at the time of this recording, we've cut about $14.63 from this deck. So, grand total, we saved about $4.62. That's assuming that you're able to sell all these cards, which seems a bit unlikely. But hey, Gerard's Hourglass Pendant is 515 at the time of this recording, so you can sell that and buy half of this deck. Or even better, you could trade for these at a game store. That's going to be it. I hope this helps somebody out there with making a decision on this and giving you a better idea of what this deck is capable of. Now, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think of the deck? Did any of this information help you out at all? Did this sway your decision to try out this deck? Or maybe you're going to go with the other deck instead. Let me know in the comments below what you all think. 
And if you like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton to putting out more content for all of you guys. That's going to wrap it up for this one. And as always, keep it casual. Still not sure what you think about the deck? Well, you can check this video here to see it in action.